Well, this is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. I was surprised at how hard it was, though. So <gasps> me too. All right, what? It we, was hard. Let's ex- so let's explain. headphone headphones in everybody. Oh yeah, God yes. Like turn off your Bluetooth. <laughs> very important. If you're at the car wash or the, you know, I love. The, they're my favorite tweets and Instagrams where it's like, well, I took my car to be detailed, and like <laughs> I was listening to the pegging episode. <laughs> It happens. You're, you you anyway, walk away from the car with your phone, but it's still in range. Just be careful, you guys. Don't you know? Let them fall out on an airplane. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm reading Julia Whalen, an arc of Julia Whalen's book, which comes out uh, in August. It's called "Thank You for Listening," and it's about two audiobook narrators who are like trading off like chapters in an audiobook, and they fall in love. Anyway, and she the the she's in the very beginning. She's on a plane, and her her headphones come unplugged from her like iPod, and she's listening to a book on audio. And there's like a small child sitting next to her, and it's exactly where you don't want that to happen. Anyway, and this could be you, so take precaution. <laughs> Headphones in, everyone. Uh, welcome to Fade and Me. I'm Sarah McLean. I read romance novels and I write them. And I'm Jennifer Prokop, a romance reader and editor. And this week, okay, so one of our listeners and a friend of the pod, Julie Block, won the auction Romancing for Reproductive Justice, in which you could win a, f- you know, you pick the Faded Mates topic. Yep. It's one of our, we love these episodes. Anyway, um, let's just pause for a moment and talk about this auction. So it was put together by um, a bookseller who wanted to do the business, who was just as angry as all the rest of us. Um, And uh, the owner of the Meet Cute Romance Bookshop and Fizzery, a new romance-focused bookstore in La Mesa, California. Becca Title is her name. And she put this whole auction together in like a heartbeat. It was amazing. She just snapped into action. Um, and what she did was ask for donations to the National Network of Abortion Funds, Collective Power Fund. Um, so when you won your auction item, you made a donation. Thank you to Julie for making the donation for the Fate of Mates episode. Um, If any of you missed the chance to be a part of the auction, but still want to give money to the National Network of Abortion Funds Collective Power Fund, we will put links in show notes. And uh, you should do that because abortion is, should be safe and legal. And uh, yeah, we support it. Help someone out there who needs the funds to get one. And we thank you, Julie, for um, auction, you know, winning the auction for this really important important cause. So she trolled us for a second and was like, I'm going to have you all do cliffhangers. And I was like, <laughs> I don't have anything to say about and that. And Jen was like, the episode is Jen saying no. <laughs> the episode is three seconds long. <laughs> so then she came up with a really fun idea, which is to talk about sex scenes, kind of our favorites, why they're hot, why they work. Well, she also was sort of like, and you're like the wild, the wildest sex scenes. Yeah, right? Which, when you've read as many books as us, (laughs) I thought, like, initially I was like, this is a great episode. We'll be able to do it. You know, this is the problem. Every once in a while, we run late on on a week and we're like, okay, we got to like squeeze in an episode. And the ones that I think are going to be fast and easy are the ones that are, are the hardest. Never easy. They require so much research. I mean, it's not like this research was difficult for me. <laughs> but I want to talk about this because it was so difficult that like I did have to do research. Like what are the what are the scenes I want to talk about? And you had a good idea before we started recording, which was let's talk about how we how picked. we how we did it. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of had the same thing where I was like, oh, that sounds amazing. It's going to be so easy. And then I found myself really kind of stalling out. I mean, almost it's it's like I, – and I think part of it is just like the logic of numbers, right? Like, okay, if almost every romance I've ever read has a sex scene, <laughs> how mm-hmm. am I supposed to now like sift through my memory – right? Like I'm a computer, like, like the fan on my Mac is like running hot. Right. And I'm just Mm -hmm. like, you know, spinning my wheels, trying to figure it out. And so at first I was, 
I was like, oh, this is going to be great. And then I quickly became a little overwhelmed. And then I realized that for me, a lot of the ways my brain started working on this was thinking about like thinking about almost in terms of tropes, right? So like my little list has things like danger bang. Oh shit, mm. it's hot. <laughs> Beautiful, mm. you know, like voyeurism, bad boys, oh no, feelings. Because one of the things <laughs> we say all the time is that like really good sex scenes are communicating feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Intimacy, a, a movement or progress forward in the relationship. And so then it kind of started making sense to me that I would be thinking about it in terms of like, oh, where are the books where like I, like that got triggered, right? Like I really saw it working. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the way I did. And then what I honestly started to do was like, just like look through my shelves, kind of yeah. look at books and then kind of, I was, you know, just started, oh yeah, oh yeah. And writing down titles. My big fear is that there's going to be like essentially faded mates bias built into it. Like I've already talked about this before and therefore it is connected in my brain in a way that hasn't happened if I just read the book and have never mentioned it. So I do think a lot of the books I'm going to mention, probably I've mentioned before, I've already done the work, the pre, you know, work of thinking about these books. I agree. And I think that um, I, there are not that many books on this list that we haven't talked about at some point in the past. We are now, like, in a position to be able to kind of talk about this differently. I just want to add that I did – so I did not go through tropes, but I did think about – I think to sort them in my head and categorize them in my head, I did it – I think I, there are probably three buckets, okay. though I'm not sure – that though the list is not bucketed. Um, and you should all be prepared because this is just going to be one of our oh my god just I, mega wreck <laughs> like and we should also probably qualify like check if you if you are somebody who needs content warnings you're going to need to check all these like before you start yeah so, I didn't reread for this I strictly was like what do pure, I remember yeah pure kind of memory yeah. <laughs> pure adrenaline pure. list making right <laughs> yes so my three are probably are bucketed as like firsts interestingly okay. like the first time I and I think that's probably like a that's the first time I saw that happen in a mm-hmm. book and like kind of acknowledged that it could be hot yeah and then I have like a what the fuck bucket, like <laughs> yeah, right? for sure. Those are Which fun. Is, those are the fun ones. Those are the ones where it's like, I what is happening? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then I have like a five alarm bucket. Like these are like the solids. Yes, you know, return to them forever. I do want to say, I while like there are probably some repeats from that we have like talked a lot about in terms of like Nikki Sloan is on my list for a very specific book. Um, There are also some, some authors that I specifically did not put on this list because I was like, we have talked about them. Yeah. Like London Hale is not on my list. Right. Even though I think London Hale and you all know this from our London Hale episode is like a very solid, like if you're looking for just a hot read, that's a good one. Tessa Bailey is not on my list. Right. Right. Despite the fact that, like, obviously her dirty talk is A+. plus. Right. Right. Well, and that's it, too. It, I kind of felt like I was trying to do the same thing, which is circle down to books where maybe we haven't talked about them as extensively or we mentioned them in interstitial, so it's essentially going to get mentioned again. But, yeah, I mean, for me, it was really interesting. I definitely had – I had those similar buckets, right? But then I think I also have these, like, trope buckets, right? So I have, okay, these people are predictably going to deliver something hot to you every time. Mm-hmm. I had, um, I, it's funny because I, although I did think about a couple, like, oh, that's the first time I saw it, they ended up kind of morphing into other buckets, like the trope buckets for me. And then definitely for sure, I have an absolute, like, what the fuck, Every time someone's like the wildest thing you've ever read, it just rises up to the surface like a whale coming up for air. One book. One book. Let's start there, Jen. Okay. So I read a book called 
I can't even say the title. I'm dying. Okay, it's called Laying Pipe by Kate Allure. And in this book, um, he's a plumber. Sure he is. she's doing some home renovations. Sure. And at one point, he builds her something he calls the drill dough. (laughs) Which is (laughs) that he, and I'm like, this actually seems very dangerous. Please don't try this at home. Where he essentially like builds her a homemade spreader bar out of like his plumbing tools and then attaches a dildo to like a drill. So it would spin real fast. We should also probably say headphones in and also don't try this at home. Like don't this try is this like at home. none of these should be tried at home. No. No. And in fact, the That's f- like a closed course professional driver situation. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know what? Like so one of my go-to people on Twitter is Jennifer Porter. Jennifer right? Porter who and, dri- who diagrams them all. And these are diagrammed. I actually was like, I remember her drawing like several, like the place, her placement on the table, what she thinks the actual thing looks like. And I remember us just like cackling. And I read this and was literally like, okay, that both seems like it would hurt. Mm-hmm. Right? No, it's too much. It's too much. But in terms of sheer what the fuckery, mm-hmm. that is. Top, like the tops. If someone's like, "What's the craziest thing you've ever read in a romance novel?" I would be like, "The Drill Do." The Drill Do. <laughs> Bam. All right. All right. <laughs> so, like, I can't top that with like a. I certainly can't top that with a contemporary. I mean, and yeah. this is where I, because I think we've, I've definitely name checked what I think is the the like wildest sex. Yeah. And that is that Satter series. Oh, Elizabeth yeah. Elizabeth Amber Satter series, which I actually have, like, gone back to recently because we did an episode with Christina Lauren where I brought those up. And I would highly recommend, like, not reading <laughs> necessarily these books again. They are not, they are not, like, they they do not age well. Yeah. Um. But, so if you are, if if you again check your content warnings but like that's the that's the original two cocks like one one character one one character two cocks um it also involves like <sighs> like the brothers are all involved there's like an altar there's like you know virgin <laughs> sacrifice like it's there's a not like murder sacrifice but like fucking know, sacrifice. sacrifice yeah sure and like they're like a bunch of, you know, paranormal creatures who they can conjure to, like, have all sorts of things happen. It's bananas. <laughs> and just, like, fully bananas start to finish. The heroes, the the villains of these books are all, like, very much caricatures. And it's just, there's a lot going on in those books. So that's probably my biggest, like, what the fuck. But yeah. I do want to, like, if we're going to just... Should we just, like, stay in the what the, what the fuck pool? Yes, for sure. Okay. Yeah, this is a fun one. Because, like, um, I got a name check Morning Glory Milking Farm, which feels like <laughs> everyone on Twitter and everybody in romance has read. But, like, <laughs> bull semen as, like, a human Viagra and therefore, <laughs> not, I'm sorry, not bull, uh, minotaur semen as human Viagra. Um, like, and then the farming of such. Yes medicine for medicinal purposes um but there's something very like sweet and wholesome about that like all those scenes where she is like milking him for her job (laughs) i mean again like these are just there are moments in romance history where you think to yourself like We'll never forget this. Remember? Wow. What a country. <laughs> Remember the year of Morning Glory Milking Farm? And then uh, I think that as fated mates, we can't we can't do this without the blood blowjob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's what I was – that's also on my list, right? Like this is like the trifecta of <laughs> – Yeah, the first – it's bo- It's all three, right? Yes. Like the Like that in so this is from the Loth- – well, it's from multiples. So. Yes, right. So, and for me, it, even though Lothair has it, I still think A Heart of Blood and Ashes is unparalleled. Oh, well, that's that's a hand job. Oh, excuse me. You're right. I mean, God, Jen. Amateur. That's like a whole separate category. <laughs> 
obviously. No, I'm talking about Lothair. Yes. Uh, there is one earlier. There are and, blood yeah. jobs earlier in the series, but like the Lothair one. Yes. In audio. <laughs> <laughs> is, is both like, I think that is the first time I registered it as like a sex act and like kind of weirdly a kink. Yeah. And then also had a like, what the fuck is happening? But of course it's happening and wow, Cressley's amazing. And then also like a five alarm sort of like, oh, this is super hot. Yeah. Right. And then it comes back around. Like she, I think Cressley realized in that moment, like, oh, this is super hot and like brings it back and brings other it books, back, for including books. Sweet Ruin, which is your fave, which is my favorite. Look. Like, sometimes kink is just a kink. It's just hot because it's hot, right? Yep. It's also one of the reasons I think it's kind of hard to talk about this stuff, right? Because sometimes you're like, yeah, it's just hot. But also, like, a blood blowjob isn't necessarily hot to everyone. Right, right. And, you know, that's fine if you're out there and you're like, ugh. Yeah. We, I, we understand. Yeah. But I also think it's worth thinking about, like, well, it's like the ultimate vulnerability. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think there's a lot of ways, too, with some of them where I could be like, oh, okay, I get why I think this is hot. Mm-hmm. Trust. I mean, and the truth is, is that, like, sex in books is often about trust. Mm -hmm. Like, it's often about, like, and especially in romance novels, we've talked about this before, but it's about, like, characters laying themselves bare for each other, which is why in romance the sex scenes should be there to move the story forward, right? Right. Because it is about emotional connection. And actually... In both of those situations, in both the blood blow job and the morning glory milking farm situation, <laughs> and in several of the other books, you can sort of see my, like, the, the seeds of my, like, alpha submissive, how I really like an alpha submissive, because, like, I, I do like it. Like, I like it when men are forced to, yeah, be vulnerable. Like, be vulnerable to heroines. Yeah. Okay, I have mentioned this one before. Everyone has heard me. Maybe you could put this together based on other things I've said. I love it when, like, people that are, like, super athletic and super cut and hot, like, do oh, yeah. crazy things. And there's a Cora Seton, Cora Riley book where, like, a Navy SEAL fucks from a handstand position. And I was like, okay, I appreciate that, one, sir. This is one of these legends on Twitter, but, like, I've never seen the title of the book. Do you right. have the title? I'm going to find it while you talk about other other things. Okay, well, here's another one that's, again, like, in the blood family, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> blood, blood, the, so the blood hand job that Jen talked about earlier is uh, a heart of blood and ashes, and that's really about, uh, there's so much going on in that scene. It's so great. <sighs> well, it's and so it's great. like, that one is really, like, talk about taking the finger. Yeah. Uh, there is a series called The Club by Lauren Rowe. And um, I tore through these books. It's a, this is a, this is like, it's four books and they follow the same, the same hero and heroine. So I guess they're cliffhangers, but I don't actually remember the cliffhangers because you can buy it as like a one through four. Got it. Right. Or you can not buy it, but it's on KU as like all of them together. And so like, I don't think I, and I came to them late enough that they were not cliffhangers for me. I just sort of like yeah, read right, read them all, yeah. giant thing. The fourth book, and this is actually the first time I've ever seen this done, and I'm not sure I support it, but in this series, I do support it. So I want to qualify this. But like, so this series has a fourth book, which is basically just an epilogue, but okay. it's not two chapters. It's like a whole book. Oh, of all the yeah. Yeah, and what's interesting is, like, the prior books all have, like, an edge of, there's, you know, the premise of this series is that the heroine takes a job, like, for, uh, like, a sex, like, a sex club. She's she's doing, like, um, admin for a sex club, and she, like, is doing the research on the clients before they get accepted into this club where you know they can they can match up with people in the world it's they don't go to the club they like are part of a club and then they like meet partners in the world so mm-hmm. it's like you know you fill you go you download an app and you say like i want to meet somebody who's into x y and z and then like you meet up at like a bar right it's like a serve like a dating app but like for rich people i don't know so kinky rich people <laughs> 
whatever. It doesn't matter. Point is, she works for this club, whatever. It's, there's a lot to really love about, like, the setup of this book. But there, there are, like, all these mysteries. Like, the FBI is involved at one time, and she gets, like, almost murdered at one time. And so, like, that's how the books move forward. They're a little bit thrillery. And then the fourth book is a really, like, intense, emotional romance. Like, a the sort of final beat. It's like that. The entire thing is the third, the, like the, like, push for them to understand each other, like, emotionally. Like, there's a pregnancy loss in this book. Like, there's a lot that goes on in this. So, um, or no, she, there's not a loss. I'm sorry. She has she has twins very early. So okay. she has, like, had these premature twins. And as we all know, who, you know, have had experience with birth, there's, like, a period of time afterward where, like, you're not allowed to have sex. Like, penetrative sex. And, like, this guy's super into, like, sex. Like, they have sex all the time. And uh, because he, like, can't deal with it, he's, like, you know, can... No, I mean, like, he's just hot for her, right? And so, like... And she's hot for him, but they can't have penetrative sex. And he, like, his trauma, it's very sort of Christian Grey. His trauma is that, like, he saw his mother killed, like, in a bloody whatever when he was a baby or young. And so he has, like, a real problem with blood. Um, And she has just had a child, so, like, she is bleeding. Sure. And he's like, I love you so much and want you so much and, like, can't bear to, like, live without giving you orgasms because that is, like, his whole thing is, like, he wants to just give her orgasms all the all the time. Thank you. That's great. So he goes down on her in, like, the longest, most intense all right. oral scene I've ever read. You go, Kurt. You go, and guys. He's like, and the whole time he's like, I can taste blood it's contemporary this is like a full contemporary book and he's like i can taste blood and then he's like and it's like turning me on like (laughs) blood used to make me like like she is rebirthing me in some way as like she's rewiring me with her like i feel like i should take a screenshot of my face so everybody can write down right now me and be like it's like Oh, right. very in- I feel like I've spent too much time talking about the series. <laughs> but the point is that, like, this scene is wild. Yeah. Because it is, there's so much emotional shit going on in the scene. And I actually don't think it would work if I hadn't read the other three books and, like, wasn't super into, like, the emotional arc of this particular hero. Mm, yeah. But it is very hot and also very, like, ah, uh, there's a lot. It's a lot here. <laughs> it's a lot. You know, so I like that it's a lot. And it's extremely long, too, which is always a sort of, you know, sure. interesting choice. Interesting. Not bad. Just an interesting choice. So uh, that's Lauren Rose, The Club. And that's number four. It's the culmination, but I highly recommend reading the others first. Sure. So you can get the full effect. Yeah. Hmm. I didn't think we'd start with blood, but we did. There you go, Julie. <laughs> This is what people come for. They, 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 they didn't expect it either, Jen. And here we are. And yet here we are. Okay. Uh, but Julie wanted cliffhangers. And look, I just delivered her one. Look at you doing it. You're doing the thing. This week's episode of Faded Mates is sponsored by Melissa McTurnan, author of Married to the Fay Queen. Married to the Fay Queen is book two in the Fairy Realm series, but it is a perfect place to jump right in. This is about Cricket, who makes a bargain for his friend's happiness, but somehow this ends up with him being married to the Gold Queen. Oh, I love a hero who makes a sacrifice, especially for happiness. That's awesome. And for his best friend. Yeah. Now, the Gold Queen's Orla, she can read his every emotion, which Uh-oh. he is convinced is pure hatred. But mm, I have a feeling that after being weeks of stuck with her in this palace, things are about to change. Orla has her own problems. Everyone thinks she's going to turn into a mad queen and forcing this dude to marry her seems to fit the bill. So what is going to happen with once she figures out what his real emotions are and once they face that they are trapped in the palace with only one bed? Ah! Mm-hmm. You can find out more about Mary to the Fay Queen or about Melissa's books at melissamct.com or uh, on Twitter or Instagram where Melissa is at, at Melissa McTurnan. Married to the Fay Queen is available in print, ebook, and on KU. So we hope that you will check it out. And thanks to Melissa for sponsoring this week's episode of the show. Okay, let me do something that I think 
exists in real life, but does not often exist in romance. So I'm excited Mm -hmm. to see it when it does, which is in real life. I hope everybody out here has had this experience. Sex is really fun, right? And in romance, instead, it's often really like serious, right? Like this has changed my life and it's Mm -hmm. so intense, right? And you don't often get, I think, which is a shame, like people just having a great time. Like it's fun and they're laughing and it's like a little, like, does that make sense? Yep. And so they're, Two books that I was thinking of. One, I thought of one, and then I like as I was looking through my list. I think I think I thought of another, which is I think I might love you by Christina C. Jones. Has two characters, Caden Jacqueline, Caden and Jacqueline, um, and this is like a series about three sisters, and I think this is the first one. And there's this whole scene, like he is just she owns like an ice cream shop, and she like gives him ice cream. He's he's lactose intolerant and she gives him ice cream that has dairy and he's like there's a whole scene where he like makes a big deal out of like farting on her which is like you'd be like how is this sexy or silly but you know what it's and this is not the sex scene but it's just like they are really like they have a lot of fun together and then when they find like when they have sex the first time like they just are like Like, it's fun. Like, they're laughing. And then there's actually a whole scene where he's, like, like kind of, like, freaking out. And the cat gets in bed with them and is, like, licking his balls. (laughs) Or something. Maybe it's, like, claws in the ass. I don't know. Something. It's really funny. Sarah's laughing. It's really funny. And And Jacqueline is, like, I know I shouldn't be laughing, but she is cracking up. And I just, it was, I will never forget that. Like, I just remember reading it and thinking, we don't get enough we don't get enough sex scenes like this where people are just like delighted and having a great time being together. Mm-hmm. And the and then as I was looking through my list or like books I've read, like you know what I mean, my Goodreads list, another one that struck me as being kind of similar is Actor Age Eve Brown where he discovers essentially her, sp- her sparkly purple dildo and is like mm-hmm. this looks like fun, let's give it a whirl. And they like play with it together. And mm-hmm. and both of those books, I think, really had that, like, this is fun. This sex is fun. And I just think that that is something that you don't see as often in romance. You see a lot of, like, it's so serious, right? It's moved me. I, I'm a changed person. So anyway, I don't know if that makes sense, but. No, it definitely does. And I think that, um, interestingly, unsurprisingly, I have several on my list that are toy- yeah. adjacent because okay. I feel like that's also or like involved toys because mm-hmm. I think that is uh, again it's like playful it is playfulness. playfulness it's also about trust yes. right it's like I'm gi- I'm I'm giving you the tools like yeah. especially with um you know when your partner in- instead of your partner bringing you toys like when your partner discovers your yes. toys yeah. like they are you are giving them access to like the tools that you find most pleasurable. And so, like, there is something very bearing about that and very, um, you know, emotionally open about that, right? So I just want to name check. I'm not going to talk too, too much about any of these, but I want to name check. uh, First things first, I want to name check Her Night with Santa, which is... Yes. (laughs) Look, we've talked about this. I've talked about this book a lot because I think it's terrific. But um, this is Adriana Herrera's Christmas novella. It's so good. (laughs) <laughs> it's a late uh, yeah. it's it's the new mythology of santa <laughs> in my house with, with my child which is like this uh one of the heroines has um essentially like santa is the family business and she is now santa um but then and then she you know the other heroine is the daughter of <laughs> one of the kings of the magi and like they find each other in the Caribbean because it's Adriana and uh after the day after Santa and there are many 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 toys involved in this like incredibly hot incredibly sexy like morsel of a book and it's terrific um but i want i literally have all these labeled as toys so i'm just going to i'm going to run through them um my favorite Lauren Blakely um who like you don't hear as much about anymore, but I really love Lauren's books. I think she really, she's one of those people who just like super hits the spot. Um, 
and is knights with him. And he is a sex <laughs> toy CEO who is like invented at one point. There's like a rooftop New York City, like high rise rooftop scene where he's like invented a new sex toy and he's like sh- letting her road test it for him. And he's like, it's hot. It's just hot. They're on like they're on a rooftop and he's like, tell me what it feels like. And she's like, holy shit, this is the greatest invention ever. And it's great. Wait, I had another one. Was it Alexis Daria's? Because I thought that was also a really good one. Oh, that's such a good one. You, you had me at Ola. Yeah. We did a whole deep dive on that, but that also has a lot of really open communication, like talk of toys, lube. It's super hot. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan of, and then um, this one is not, this one, the sex toy actually is the inciting incident of the third act breakup on this one, but I I just want to nod to it because actually I think the sex across the board in this book is great. And that is Sarah Kate's praise, which we've talked about, oh, we sort yeah. of like have danced around on the podcast and I'm not going to talk too much about it because I think it will come back in a, in a future episode, but um, that is a great, great book and it's super kinky. The, the kink is praise kink, which is like, you know, if you're into like good girl, like, mm-hmm. it, which is super hot. Um, and there is a like, I love a panty vibrator. It's such a weird thing, but I love that like, you know. Oh, maybe I'm like, you know, maybe this will be how we try and get from one to one. You'll say something. I'll be like, oh, wait, I think I've got that one. Yeah. Like I just, I, but I really like that because I feel like he's in, like often this is a hero heroine thing and Uh she's wearing it and he's in control and like, it just happens in the middle of like a dinner party or whatever. And I think that's hot. Yes, for sure. So a person who I think just like writes really hot, like really like great hot books is um, Elia Winters. And oh yeah, yes, and right? talk about sex toys. Yes, and there's two that essentially are are kind of have that vibe in Just Past Two, and then. Um, three-way split. In three-way split, she owns a sex toy shop and there's a sex swing in the book. Mm -hmm. And she hooks up with these two um, men who are like kind of lover, like essentially like they casually hook up and they're friends, but like somehow when she enters in, they really become like a threesome. And then Mm -hmm. in Just Past Two, it's about a couple who are experimenting with opening their marriage. And both of these books are like incendiary levels of hot bananas bananas hot yeah super super good um so you're getting into sorry yeah no do you have more to say about that no because that leads us into like menage yes and i have a few more of those but you go and then i can add some of my mind so i just want to name check a couple of people because we talked about them before but like Mm -hmm. katie robert for me Mm -hmm. is somebody who like her menage books are terrific um, she really knows how to do it where often what ends up happening in Maynard's books for me, like I love a Maynard's book, but like it often feels to me like the third party in the Maynard's is like, or not third party, but like there's always one who feels like he is a tool rather than, or she is a tool rather, rather than, than a like character, an yeah. active participant in whatever's going on. Katie does not disappoint. Um, and then... There are a number, but if, like, Maynage as, like, ultimately in a triad or in a, like, partnership, like, a a long-term relationship with multiple people, um, if you just are looking for great books where there is a third Mm -hmm. in some of the scenes, Nikki Sloan does that really well. We did a deep dive on um, three, three, three little mistakes. Thank you. We did a deep dive on Three Little Mistakes, which has a great, like, third, a woman is a third in in the couple's sex life for a little bit of time. Also, um, Isabel Loves Unconventional um, also has that. So, and both of those do, like, really tackle that, like, menage experience, the the one night menage, the, like, third in the, in the moment really well. Yeah. A really super hot one like that is, like, I have reread this book a bunch of times because it's just super, 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 super hot. Jasmine Haynes, who is also Jennifer Scully, has written a bunch of, a a bunch of, of, uh, of books, like, sort of, that are, like, more erotica. 
And there's one called Take Your Pick. And essentially, there's a woman who has, she has, like, a kind of a long-term, like, boyfriend. But she's sleeping with her contractor on the side. And the three of them get together. Wait, is she sleeping on her contract with her contractor on the side in an open relationship? Or is it, is there infidelity involved here? No, I don't think it's... You know what? I would we call it infidelity. <laughs> I I wouldn't, but I also think that it's it's a I th- I'm like it didn't bother me, but I think if you are at all uh if you're all worried about that, maybe it maybe it would because I, I mean I think for sure he um, the boyfriend who is kind of like the Grant, kind of the serious guy, um, realizes that she is seeing someone else. Like, I don't think it's like that they are, that she's cheating, but she basically is, you know, she's like, he's like, I want to be exclusive. And she's kind of like, yeah, but what about Carl? And he's like, well, why don't we just all, we'll just all do it and then we'll figure it out. And they all do it. Nice. All right. I'm sorry. Cool. Okay. I also really look like a book called Kelly Unwrapped by Amy Jo Cousins. And in this one, this is great. Um, essentially, Kelly is our main character, and she is going to meet her ex at this pool hall and the Gabe. And Gabe has Kate with him, his kind of new girlfriend. But, like, it's pretty clear from the beginning that all three of them are treating this pool hall date as, like, a like a kind of a checking each other out prelude to a threesome. Mm-hmm. And then they get in a cab and go home. And the whole thing is just like, like fire. It's great. It's nice. really, really good. And it's a novella. So it's like super short, really fun. But yeah, it's like sort of this thing where it's kind of like, Callie's like, am I really into this or not? And then she gets there and she's like, oh, I'm into it. And you will be too. And then one of nice. my favorite is All Together by Brill Harper, which um, I we know it, we've, we've mentioned before. before about. Yeah, and it's – I really like – there's three of them, and they each get a point of view section, but it never goes back. It's not interspersed. It's like one of them, and then you get the middle from another point of view, and then the last part from a third, the third point of view. And it was really interesting way to do it as opposed to like sort of interspersing the three. So I also thought structurally it was kind of interesting. Also very happy. Also, that series, that Ménage series from Brill Harper, um, if you are into Praise Kink, I just went back to it after I read Sarah Kate's Praise for reasons. And it's also pretty Praise Kinky. Hmm. Okay, there you go. Oh, P.S. I did a little research. That Navy Seal book is called The Navy Seal's Christmas Bride by Cora Seaton. And in the scene... He's basically like, come over to this wall. And she's like, yeah, like we've tried it before, right? And she basically is like, um, he's like, we should both be in handstands. And the heroine thinks, <laughs> that wasn't that unusual, right, when he shows her the wall. But she she knew she'd have a great time no matter how they did it. Uh-huh. I like that spirit. Good job. <laughs> Very supportive. Uh, well, if we're going to talk about athletes and we're going to talk about, uh, then we have to talk about Tamsin Parker. Too. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And we've talked about, again, we've talked about Tamsin on the pod before because these books are very hot. Um, but she has a whole series set at like basically the Olympics. They're called the snow and ice games. Sure. Um, and, uh, the, the one that we love is fire on, I- on the ice, um, which is about a speed skater and a figure skater. Probably the hot. It, this might be the hottest book I've ever read. It's bananas. <laughs> so extremely great. It really scratches Jen's itch for uh, yeah superior athletes, super people with superior bodies doing superior things. You know what else is interesting in that in about that book is, and I'm sure I've said this too when we've talked about it. This is probably the only book I've read where there's like a polyamorous like ending, right? It ends with them kind of agreeing to be in an open relationship. Mm-hmm. But only one of them, the speed skater, is interested. Like the other, like this the figure skater is like, I'm happy to just be with you, but I also am totally happy for you that you need this, like, you need more. Right. And so yes. it's a really cool ending because I think in real life, 
not all polyamorous people just end up in closed triads. So I think it's also good. That's correct. This week's episode is sponsored by Lumi Labs, creators of microdosed gummies, which deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. What is great about these is I have tried, uh, I have like two kind of specific maladies I've tried these for, and it's worked really great for both. One is I have trouble falling asleep, and that has been really helpful to just take one at bedtime, but also I have restless leg syndrome. And so sometimes in the afternoon, that's something that, you know, I'm kind of dealing with later in the afternoon. And I um, have taken them at that time, and it has been really helpful, too. That's awesome. Eric said that he's been taking them and finding a lot of focus during the day. So I think depending on what you get from THC in general, um, you might be able to find a little a little bit of that in these gummies. I tried them last week, um, and I was looking for focus but actually got the sleep, <laughs> which hey. was awesome. I mean, look. Nothing wrong with that. Out like a light, slept like a baby. I'm for it. They do really taste great and feel amazing. Um, You can get them through the mail, which I think is a real benefit, and they are available nationwide. To learn more about microdosing THC, just do a quick online search or go to microdose.com, where you can use the code FADEDMATES to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. You can find links in show notes, but again, that's microdose.com, code FATEDMATES. And thanks so much to Lumi Labs and Microdose Gummies for sponsoring the episode. So I want to talk about bondage because I think that often what ends up happening when we talk about um, erotic romance, Mm -hmm. like often people just like really lean into like, They think all erotic romance involves BDSM. Right. And that is actually not the case. In fact, I would say most of the books we've already discussed, however far into the episode as we are, most of those books are not bondage related. Right. So that just gives you a sense of like, there's lots out here in the pool um, for you to try. But I do want to name check a few because I think um, there are, I think for me, like, Bondage is often, I think sometimes uh, in the worst sort of case, it can be used as a shorthand to convince you as a reader that the scene is hot, but the scene is actually not that hot. Like it's it's not actually doing the work, right? It's not doing the emotional work of like the sex scene. Like it's, it's short, it's shorthanding it. And for a lot of us, like we're making that mental leap ourselves. Um, but there are a few authors who I think have done it really beautifully. And I want to sort of name, name them. Penny Ames. We did a deep dive on this episode. No, we didn't do a deep dive. I put it on the list last year as one of the best of the year. Penny Ames is for the love of April French is set in a kink club where there is bondage, like a bondage is a piece of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and she is, uh, the heroine is a dom and the hero is like kind of learning to be submissive. And uh, it's wildly sexy. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a great one. Um, I also want to name check Audra North. Uh, we're never going to do an alpha submissive episode because Jen's not into it. But Audra North's uh, Giving It Up is another one where he is, he's like a SWAT team leader and he like is in control of like everything. His family, his like, he takes care of his mother and his sister and like he's the, he's the guy who like has to make sure like mm-hmm. none of the guys on the SWAT team die and like he's a hostage negotiator and like, you know, he's all these things. He's like super in control all the time and like all he really wants is to give up control in bed and it's super hot. Um, that's called giving it up. So... Similar to that, I would put in Jenny Nordback's His Leading Lady, yeah. um, which is, has another, it's like, you know, he, she is the dominatrix and mm-hmm. he is a movie star who is taking on a role where he has to kind of be a dom. It's essentially kind of a, almost like a, a, very much like a Christian Grey type character that he'll be playing, only like, mm-hmm. you know, real intense. And, um... So the movie studio doesn't think he has the chops for this role, essentially. And so he and his agent realize that if he doesn't kind of figure this out, that he might get 
fired from the production. So they go and hire this woman to essentially train him. And so that like, I'll, I'll teach you what you need to know vibe is super, super great. And in this book does it really well because the whole progression is like, I'm learning it for this role, but then I'm also like learning about who I am. And I love that too. Like this like multi-layered sort of exploration of like what's going on here. So it's terrific. It's super, super hot. Uh, also, it feels like we have to name check the Game Maker series again here, right? Yes. Which is, mm-hmm. um, the master is the chastity belt. Hello, chastity belt searchers. <laughs> sure, Every once in are. a while. <laughs> Every once in a while, we look at our, like, Google search <laughs> terms and, like, chastity belt romance is always one of them. So, hi, everyone. It's unfortunately <laughs> the same book, but... Um, the master is the one with the chastity belt, um, and the game maker is he buys her like he's a billionaire. Oh yeah, he buys her like uh, easily a million dollars worth of sex toys. So that, Looks and in- then there's also lots of bondage in that episode. In that, book. yes. Did I say the game maker? I meant the player. The player. Yeah, he buys her. the game maker series. The it's the yep. game maker series. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So in that series, it's like this real, I don't know, like this bad boy attraction, right? Like, Mm -hmm. especially I would say, actually all three of them, maybe more in the first two. This is an interesting thing to me because when I was like a teenager reading like teenage romances, like I love that shit, right? But as a grown woman, I feel like, right? I, I feel like it's really hard to sell me on that. In, like, ma- books where it's, like, male-female, like, I'm just kind of like, whatever, how bad can he be? I mean, I guess maybe that's all of dark romance, but there's a lot of gay romance where this, like, forbidden attraction part, like, that has that same, like, it rings that same bell, but in a way that is, like, really different. And two books in particular that I thought were great for this, like, kind of bad boy, like, mythology is um, Band Sinister by K.J. Charles. <gasps> I mean... It's so good. And <laughs> it's such right? A good book. It's yeah. so good. And it totally, right? Like, he's like, I am the good one. And then, like, I, you know, his magnetic attraction to like the guy next door and all, and his band of like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, scoundrels. It's so terrific. And then, um, this is more romance light because it's a mystery series. Um, Adriana recommended them to me and I listened to them all in audio the Adrian English mysteries, where Jake is a cop who is closeted, and Adrian is a bookstore owner. He owns a mystery bookstore, and he is super Perfect. attracted to Jake, and, you know, they're really attracted to each other, but, like, Jake is so such a bad boy, right? He's so bad for him. And so those are two books where, like, that, like, bad boy mythology, like, really, really worked for me. And then I was mm-hmm. thinking one where it actually it does kind of work in a male-female romance is this Sophie Jordan book, which I love, called Fury on Fire, where Faith is, like, essentially, like, this good girl and her dad or her brother or the, is the sheriff and she, like, is really insistent she's going to, like, move out on her own. And she, like, moves into this duplex and the guy next door, his name is, his name is North Callahan and he has just been released from prison. And, like, she is super attracted to him even though she knows that she should not be. And it's just so good and so intense. So I would say like, that's like a, it's a funny, it's a trope that is harder and harder to like make work for me, but when it does work, it's like perfect. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to jump from Sophie Jordan because the one thing that we haven't done yet is historicals. Okay. And I think that um, one of the things that people don't fully understand who don't read historicals is how fucking hot historicals Mm -hmm. can be. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to take Sophie Jordan contemporary Fury on Fire and also just name check. First of all, I think Sophie writes a blazing hot book. Um, so if you've never read Sophie's historicals, you absolutely should. Um, The Virgin and the Rogue, which again, I know we've talked about because we did an aphrodisiac romance, is so hot. (laughs) The premise is that the heroine gets hold of an aphrodisiac for, well, she she's taking, like, a tincture for her um, cramps, her, like, you know. Right. 
her cramps and to assuage her cramps. And uh, her sister has messed with the, like, the contents of this tincture. And she takes it and it assuages the cramps, but also makes her the horniest anyone has ever been (laughs) in their lives. And so she literally, like, in the middle of the night, finds this, like, well, finds this. They They have a house guest, this, like, super rake. And she climbs him like a tree. Mm. And he is like, what is happening? And there's, like, a really beautiful, like, there's a lot of consent in this book, too. Like, there's a lot of discussion of, like, like he won't because she can't. He figures out very fast that she's, like, on on an aphrodisiac. But, like, then the next day after it's worn off, like, they, they are just so hot for each other. And it's really fabulous. Um... So there's that. Um, I don't know how many historicals you have, but I have I, I have like I have two. And again, I think I'm so in E. E. Ottoman's a matter of disagreement, it's sort of like surprise hot. Like it's mm-hmm. it's like really like there's a simmering attraction between them and it's a novella, and then like all of a sudden in the last chapter, it like like E. E. Ottoman basically like just like turns up the heat, like 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 the flame just goes whoosh. And I I'm I love that. It's really, really good. But also I was gonna mention, and I'm sure we've mentioned them before, there's a whole historical series by Kate Pierce, the Simply I, Right, which are Well, you like the Simply Ones, I like the Sinners Club. So perfect. there are m- multiples. Yes. All Kate of the also historicals writes can, are mm. Yeah, she also writes lots of contemporaries. She's written, like, a million books. She's, yeah. She writes lots of contemporaries and cowboy books, but if you have never read those historicals, they are great. Yes, really Also, good. very worth exploring Nicola Davidson's backlist, yes. um, which I think is almost entirely on KU, um, but they are all just erotic novels set in the Regency um, and very great. Um and I have to give a shout out here. Well, first of all, can we just like, we're just going to take a, a little detour back into the what the fuck. <laughs> um, we did a deep dive on Lisa Valdez's passion, which just mm-hmm. spending any time on that deep dive, you'll realize. <laughs> yeah. Why? Um, why that is in the what the fuck bucket. Um, but also the OG <laughs> um, what the fuck romance novelist is Bertrice Small, (laughs) Um, who we have never done a deep dive on. But um, my first, I think I've said, I've confessed this on the podcast when I was like 13, my sister-in-law gave me All the Sweet Tomorrows, which involves um, (laughs) a heroine following her, this is deeply problematic, you guys, following (laughs) her her, her husband, who she, like, loves, he's been kidnapped and brought to some location uh, by an evil sultan, and she sells herself to the sultan, and then he breastfeeds from her. Sure. And that was the first time I had ever seen anything <laughs> like that. It was very eye-opening for a 13-year-old. Sure. Um, but breastfeeding romance novels is a kink. It is in a lot of them, and Bertrice Small really launched that ship for me. <laughs> oh, I don't even know really where to go from there. Now, I mean, do I, that, Sarah? I mean, you know, Fine. look, if that's your thing, sure. we support you here sure. at Faded Mates. Sure. You can find that in uh, Derek Craven, our favorite. Yeah, sure. And also Galen Foley. I think it's The Princess. This morning I did a little research trying to figure out which one it was, but no. I'm pretty sure it's The Princess. But it happens in there, too. Sandra Brown, I think, traffics in oh, that a little bit. And all Sandra Browns. <laughs> um, okay. I think if we're I, – I don't even know if we're, like, making sense anymore. But I have a uh, – I have a – it's basically erotica, right? Like, there's some some folks that I'm like, okay. Um, Nikki Sloan, Katie Robert, but Jane Ryland – Writes a series of books. Um, the first one I think is called Kate's Crew. Oh. And she's like renovating her house. And then next door, or th- these guys are helping her renovate her house. I'm not really clear. Oh, I love these like. There's like four these, or five of them. Yeah. And they're all like, and it's like, here are three carpenters. And they're all yes. just. They're for her. They're the there for the butcher, the baker, the candlestick. Baker. And they're there for each other. <laughs> and this has spawned 
many another series. I just think she's like one of those authors who, when they come up on BookBub, because they're cheap, I'll be like, oh, yeah, I should definitely buy this just because Mm -hmm. that way I know I will enjoy it when I need it. This is not quite on that level. Um, but uh, and we've talked about her a lot, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But Robin Lovett, uh, if you yes, like think in space, the Planet of Desire series, um, though a lot of aliens, there a bunch of spaceship crashes on a on an alien planet, and the whole atmosphere is an aphrodisiac. Okay, space. Enjoy. I'll pick this one up. Okay, space. so <laughs> space <laughs> challenge accepted. Um, I have. I don't, Dubcon can be real touch and go for me, right? So I, there's a series called the Grab series by Lolita Lopez that I think of as being essentially like Dubcon light, like just a little hint of it. Mm -hmm. And that is because like the, the setup of the series is that, you know, there's these women on this planet and like there's the, it starts off with this, this like race and like essentially they're like cattle almost and they have to Mm -hmm. run and if one of these aliens catches them like or grabs them then they are like essentially married off to this guy and this alien you know and all of them so you're kind of like this is not really consensual right like they they have to they're taken as like payment for something that this planet has done um all of the sea and then they go up to like the starship or whatever with these you know, handsome alien fellows. And all of them also include, like, some threesome scenes. But, you know, and it turns out these are, like, good guys. Like, it's not like they're monsters or whatever. But, yeah, it's, like, so it's, like, got those elements of Dubcon, but not so much so that it's, like, too much for me. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a great series. If you are, now we're off my list, but I think we've gone off the list. Sure. (laughs) All of us. Um, I mean, I, I just, sometimes I think, like, our listeners, like, these two are really weird. Like they've read a lot of books. Like I, I'm sorry, you guys. We just have. This we is what have. we do. I'm sorry. But I'm not if sorry. Dub, if You're, Dubcon is these your people th- love us. Yes. <laughs> if you are wading into the Dubcon pool, but like you don't want to go full dark romance, like mm-hmm. truly like non-con, um, you want to do something where like there's either like light Dubcon or Dubcon where or like. Cons- consensual non-consent right Mm -hmm. like where like the play is or the sex is non-consent because they've agreed to it um there is tessa bailey and eve danger i said i was going to talk about tessa but this is i'm this is not yeah it's over the line because she's co-writing with eve dangerfield here who also writes very sexy books um they wrote a book called captivated where the heroine has like the hots for her landlord yeah and um has like basically like written an entire graphic novel that no one is ever supposed to see where she is like taken yeah. captive by her landlord <laughs> and he finds it and then is like, all right, let's do it. We can, let's do this. And they make an agreement that that's what they're going to do. So um, that's called Captivated. It's great. And then like the original for me of these books, the first one that I read, and, and again, like I'm sure there were some before, but like the first one that I read and the one that I feel like a lot of romance, like, Thought, like the first one that romance writ large found and like really thought about is Lila Pace's um, asking, asking for, for it, it seri- series, which again sort of like explores this this world of consensual non consent is very sexy, um, and it's multiple books long. Same yeah. same couple multiple books. Um, we might as well mention the Katie Porter series, right? Oh, the Las which Vegas we Aces. About, we were talking about yesterday. Right. And also, if you have, like, now a fighter pilot kink because you saw Top Gun, um, one of the books, I think the middle one, where they're a married couple experiments with, um, with essential, with, like, consensual non-consent. Yep. There's and, also an alpha submissive in that. Jen doesn't believe it's real, but fine. it is. I trust you. Um, Not that book, a different book in that yeah. series. Yeah, and there's also a book in that series that has voyeurism that is super hot. And one that has, like, costume play, yeah. which I got to be honest, you guys, like, in the real world, costume play feels like it would feel, like, I mean, I feel like I, like, it feels like it should be really, it should, it would make me feel very silly. But, like, it is super hot in this book. Yeah. And, like, that I hope, like, I do not mean to offend if costume play is your thing. Right. Um, but, like, it is, it is just a thing that in real life I feel like, 
That would be. I feel. I would feel silly. It'd but be, yeah. Well, I it's think very hot in this book. And I actually just recently. What did I read? Shit! I just read a book like this week that had it, and I enjoyed it. Now I can't remember what it was. Well, it's funny that you say that because I feel like I read a chastity belt recently and can't remember that either. Okay, voyeurism though, I love it. So three books I want to mention. I've mentioned most of these before. I bet I don't care. Um, Clay and Florence in Joanna Shoup's The Prince of Broadway mm-hmm. are escaping from cops who are breaking into his casino and they kind of go through to the brothel next door and there's a peephole and they watch together. Super hot. Mm-hmm. Beautiful Stranger by Christina Lauren is basically them fucking in public all over New York City because they both think it's hot. And then a great book called Being Neighborly by Mika James where yes. she essentially like moves into a new place and her neighbor across the way his doesn't have blinds look and he's perfect taking care he's having some self self i love that neighbor doesn't have blinds story oh yeah it's oh, great. oh god it's a great one yeah um mm, so good for it uh wait i had another one i wanted to bring up let me think for a second oh Hot historicals. You cannot talk about hot historicals without talking about Adriana Herrera as a Caribbean heiress in Paris. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which is flaming hot. Yes. Um, it was out last week. Um, so it is in stores now. Do yourself a favor. Yeah. That Eiffel Tower scene will be burned into my brain forever. Look, if you've ever wanted to bang on the Eiffel Tower, and who hasn't? Sure. When they're building it still. Being the first I mean, ones to christen it. Exactly. Um, also, Sex Club's Joanna Shoup's most recent book is It Begins in a Mystery Sex Club. Mm. So, Okay. I have a couple more trope topics. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what's a really interesting, like, kind of hot? Like, have you read The Red by Chris- Tiffany Rice? So Tiffany Rice yes. writes a really hot book, but I, a lot that whole original Sinner series has to do with priests, so I can't do it. But The Red is actually this woman who essentially, like, there's almost like this magical kind of, it's like really interesting. It has to do with art and fucking, basically. Put that in your I mean, it has to do with fine. art and fucking. It's great. Um, okay. I have two more, like, big topics. One is... Okay, I guess I should have probably talked about this one when we talked about athletes. But my personal topic was, I have one book under this topic, by the way. Enemies to Lovers Where They Can Beat the Shit Out of Each Other. (laughs) And it's Heated Rivalry by Rachel Reed. It's two hockey players. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, my God. Like, oh, my God, Sarah. (laughs) I mean, it opens with, like, one of them just, like, kind of waiting around, and then the other one shows up, and it's just, like, like so, like, it's just, like, Clash of the Titans, right? Mm -hmm. And it turns out that they have essentially been having this, like, secret affair for years because, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're professional athletes. I think that just recently, like, kind of a a second book with these two characters came out. I have not read it yet, but— This is one of those books. Heated Rivalry is one of those books where I literally do not know a person who has read it who hasn't said, like, oh, my God, it's so good. All right. I also have Oh No Feelings. (laughs) (laughs) Oh No Feelings. (laughs) And apparently I have a very strange, very particular kink, which is I have tremendous upper body strength. And I'm going to, like, boost. microtrope. <laughs> microtrope. I'm going to remember that next time someone asks for your favorite microtrope. I'll be like, I have tremendous upper body strength, and I'm just going to boost you up onto my face. Mm-hmm. That is Caro Carson's. Uh, I can't remember which book it is. You'll have to look down. The, the one about the – I've talked about this book before, The Captain's Vegas Vows. Oh, yeah. And then also an Aaron McCarthy book, um, the Fast Track series. It's book number two. Um, and basically it happens and I'll be like, I was like, okay, that sounds good. (laughs) All right. Ready? Oh, no feelings. You want me to do? Oh, no feelings. Yeah, let's do it. This is very adjacent to delayed gratification for me. Like I've been Mm -hmm. waiting for you forever. Right. So 
Kiss of Snow by Nalini Singh, because it takes like 10 books for those two to finally get together. Sin and Ink by Naima Simone. I've been in love with you. Oh, my God. Right? So good. I've been in love with my brother's widow. Wait for it by Molly O'Keefe. I am in love with my brother's ex-wife, and my brother is a dickhead. Scandal. Yeah. Caress by Ice. I am a I'm a sigh and don't have feelings, and now all of a sudden I do. And then Judgment Road by Christine Fian, which is just fucking bonkers, but, like, presses every single one of my buttons, like, a million times over. All right. I have a um, Oh No Feelings one. Marie Donovan's Her Last Line of Defense, which is a blaze. R.I.P. blaze. Um... And is, so I think I've admitted this on past episodes, but, like, I'm really a sucker for a military romance. So this hero is, I think, a Green Beret. And um, he gets in trouble with his, like, superior, and he's basically punished by having to take, like, the general's daughter into the woods to teach her survival before she, move, like, goes on a trip to South America somewhere. I bet he's going to teach her something else. And so it's like, <laughs> you know, like, she goes into a river and he's like, you're dead of a snake bite. <laughs> Everything is like, you're going to die. Like, she's like, and she's, like, extremely competent. She's but she's, like, not an outdoorsy person, and so whatever. Um, so they, they're on, like, a camping trip, essentially, a survival camping trip for, like, I don't know, a week. And it's like, you know, now there's a Scorpio in, a scorpion in your boot. Not a Scorpio. There's no Scorpio in your boot. Watch out for me. I'm in your boot, everybody. <laughs> There's a scorpion in your boot. Um, and so they're, like, out in the woods. And um, he, of course, is, like, very rough and, like, does not feel feelings. And um, – but definitely wants to bang her. So they do bang. Um, and there's this, like, great oral scene on a rock in the middle of nowhere. And then they come out of the woods and he's like, okay, I feel feelings for you, but I'll never speak of them. God and forbid. so you go on your trip, and I am going back to work, and we are never going to speak of this again. And uh, so she does. And he's like, a wreck about it. Yeah. But the sex is great. And then he's also very broken because he's a big dumb b- dummy. Big dummy. I like it. Um, okay. I have one last category. Mm-hmm. Ready? Which is like, oh, shit, it's hot. <laughs> like, right? Like, where you're just like, it's just hot. It's hot from beginning to end hot. Yep. And maybe you're surprised by it. Maybe you weren't expecting it, but maybe it just was. And that is American Royalty by Tracy Livesey. Mm-hmm. Which is not out yet. Is out soon. Oh, the, the bathtub scene? Hello. That's exactly what I was going to say. Uh, he basically, great. listen, he, he's just seen the queen and has promised the queen, I am not going to, trust me, I would never. I'm not the, real queen, her, not the real queen, not the real queen, not duchess. <laughs> right. And then he goes back to his, you know, castle or whatever and finds her in the bathtub. And whew, what are promises? Um, similarly, <laughs> like, what are promises to a monarch? <laughs> I Listen, it doesn't even matter. It's fine. <laughs> Um, then there is Like Lovers Do, also by Tracy, right? Hammock. Which we've talked about because we talked love so about, much yes. here on the pod. Um, Taken Hostage by Kinky Bank Robbers by Annika Martin. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, which is... We've talked about this one, too. It's so nonsense, and I love it. It doesn't even... Like, that entire no. book is romance reasons, and it's fine. It's so ridiculous, it's, and I love it. I love it. And then, here's here's an interesting one. Rosie... Rosie Dannon. Rosie Dannon is... The roommate. Yes, but in... Okay, The Roommate is the first book. The Intimacy Experiment is the second book. But in between, at some point, she wrote, like, a little, yes, like... the newsletter. Scene, short. yes, where the heroine from book two joins the couple from book one in a threesome. And it's, like... We love fire. to see it, Rosie. It literally came to my inbox. I don't know where you get it. I think you might be able to get it on her website. We'll have a look. 
I think I have a PDF of it somewhere because that's what happens. And if that is the case, I will put it in show notes. But yeah, I just well, remember. Maybe we should ask Rosie first. Well, I mean, I'm going to ask Rosie first, obviously. Um, oh, wait. I have one more. Okay. This is real old school. Lover, Rage, and Mary. Lover, Rage, and Mary. <laughs> Right? Oh, my God. We didn't talk about any of those. I'm going to talk about my favorite, too. Okay. Here you go. In Lover, Rage, and Mary, he essentially is – he shares his body with, like, a dragon or something, whatever, and and he's really worried that, like, he will not be able to keep the dragon in control when they finally do it. So he has his brothers chain him to the bed yep. so that he will, like, not change into, like, the dragon thing. And mm-hmm. – Listen, it's great. It's all hot. All of it. That entire book is everything I want in the world. Lover, Rage, and Mary. I don't remember its real name. It's the blue one. Hang on. I, get it. <laughs> I, get it. I don't know which, which one is it. It's I can never remember. Well, that's because we'll just say what the actual people are and then we'll... I can't remember her name either. Hang on. I got to think for a second. Well, who's the he? It's Revenge is him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a What's good one. What's her name, though? I don't remember either. All right, Elena. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, well, my favorite of those books is <laughs> Lover, Revenge, and Elena. So she's a nurse, and he's a sympath. He's the king of the sympaths, right? So, like, he, like, deeply cannot feel feelings. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> right? Um, and so he, like, so, um, and there is, like, there is a phone sex scene in that book mm. that just, I mean... My Kindle blew up. Like, I had to get a new Kindle. Um, It was great. And then there's, like, he's, like, afraid to feed from her. Like, he won't feed from her. And, like, the the way that the world building there is, like, they have to feed. Like, you feed from your mate. And he won't feed from her. And when he finally does, it's, like. And then, of course, when they do feed from their mate, they get, like. Sure. Iron powers. hard-ons. <laughs> like, I mean, they get, like, they get, like, yard sticks made of iron. <laughs> and, oh, my God. And it's, like, I mean, you want to talk about somebody who just, like, just, un like, peels off her skin to, like, pure id energy and writes? J.R. Ward. It's J.R. Ward. J.R. Ward. I had one. Oh, okay. I'm going to, okay. Here's what I, here's how I think we should end. I want to talk about, like, what's something you've read, like, real recently? Because all of these have been, like, things that have really been, like, in the vault, right? Like, I've read these books yeah, a long yeah, time yeah. ago or whatever. So That I keep coming back to. Yeah. Like, books right? you keep coming back to. Right. Okay. This week, I'm reading Waylon by Theodora Taylor. And this is, like, big spoiler alert, everybody. Mm-hmm. He... Um, she saves him. She's a nurse practitioner and he's like shot and she like essentially saves him. And then she, he's recovering in her home, but she's really worried. She doesn't really trust him. So she's like handcuffed him to the bed. And then he agrees to be her teacher, like sex lesson. He's fine. And then she like, is like, I can't be with you because you know, I'm going to, I need to marry a doctor and move to the suburbs and buy my yellow house. And it turns out that she's like on her literal wedding day. Waylon appears in the church, right, and, like, saves her from her, this man she's going to marry, who, of course, is bad. And that he beats the shit out of this guy. And then they have sex against the wall in the church while she is in the wedding dress that she's going to be used, like, that was going to be for another man. And then this guy, like, wakes up while it's happening. And Waylon's like, shut the fuck up. I'm busy now. And I've got to tell you, I wasn't mad about any of it. In fact, I was like, this is literally the best thing I've ever read in my life. So there you go. <laughs> a new classic, everyone. A new classic. <laughs> so I am, I mean, I already mentioned the, I mentioned the Sarah Kate book, Praise, but also you did not mention the second book in that series, which came out like two weeks ago called Eyes no. on Me, mm-hmm. which is a lot of you on Instagram want us to do a stepbrother romance and I, uh, a stepbrother interstitial. And I don't think we are going to do stepbrothers. Like 
whatever. It's complicated. Yeah. But uh, this one is for you if you like stepbrothers. <laughs> He's significantly older than her, so, like, they didn't grow up in the same house. Um, but he, you know, but they have known each other since she was a teenager. He had no feelings for her whatsoever at all, like, pure nothing. And then, um, but he's super into voyeurism, which is, you know, sure. I expected Jen to mention it then, but she didn't, I'm she sorry, didn't, I so failed, I will. I failed. It's called, it's called Eyes on Me. It's very new. Um, and he, like, goes on to, like, a, essentially, like, an OnlyFans-style site, and he discovers right. that his stepsister, who is now, you know, a grown woman, is doing an OnlyFans site. And so then he, like, pretends to be, like, he, like, it's like, it's like, it's like if, um, you've got mail, we're super kinky. So he is both the, the dude who she is, you know, she is performing for on OnlyFans and her stepbrother in real life, who she's had a crush on for a long time. And then there's a, the next one is Menage and it comes out in two weeks. Ooh, well, that's exciting. Okay. Here's one that ties that all together then. Goldie and the Bears by Hannah Murray. <laughs> Um, she is going up to this cabin. She's going to start her OnlyFans type site. Mm-hmm. And um, these this man and his business partners are there. There was some sort of booking problem on the, you know, on this. And they're in a relationship, the two dudes. Yes, exactly. God, it's so hot. And they're like, mm-hmm. we will help you film. You know what I love? I love it when the menage is like the two dudes are already in a relationship yes. together. And then like the. The third woman person. is the third. Yeah. And then I love it when one of them is like, here's a micro troop I really like, where he's like, yeah. he's like, I'm going to tell you what, like, you do this to my partner because he really likes that. Like, yeah. I like it when one of them takes, like, full control. Yeah. And in this case, I think there's three men. So it's her and three men. Oh, is there three? Gosh, yes. I forgot about that. What a hero. I forgot about that third one. <laughs> Heroes for our time. That's all you need to know about that. Super, super high. Mm-hmm. I feel like I could probably do this all day at some point. We just I know we got it, but we do have to pull the trigger because we are running late this, <laughs> this week. So that was a good solid hour and 20 minutes. And uh, we're really happy to have been here for all of you. <laughs> um, as always, you can find us on fadedmates.net uh, or find us on Twitter at fadedmates or on Instagram at fadedmatespod. Thank you to our sponsors, Lumi Labs and Melissa McTurnan for sponsoring the episode. As always, you guys, the best way for you to support Faded Mates is to support our sponsors. Don't forget to, if you order from Lumi Labs, use Faded Mates as your code for a discount. Thanks so much. Have a great week, Have everybody. Have a great week.